we now have the $100 billion BRICS Contingent Reserve Arrangement, or the CRA, becoming fully operational. Now, they've come together here and talked about this and put things into motion in July. It entered into force July 30th. But now everything has basically been laid out, any other problems worked out, and China says they are providing the funding with $41 billion. That's a bulk of it. Uh, Russia, Brazil, and India are stepping up with $18 billion each, and South Africa with $5 billion. Now, they've reached out and done work in different fields with different countries, and China also reached out to, I believe it was Argentina, that was in dispute with the UK over the Falkland Islands, and China agreed to sell them stealth military fighter jets to Argentina. That didn't make the UK too happy. So, China, Russia, India, Brazil, South Africa, and potentially Argentina there with Brazil, a part of this, and the only reason other countries, I believe, haven't jumped on onto this is because they were waiting to see the repercussions, if they could get it off the ground, if it could really be fully fu functioning and serve as an, an alternative to the IMF and their emergency lending. Now, in this, they're going to say these emergency loans for countries here will be allowed if they're up to 30% of a member nation's contribution. Uh, and that will be declared by a simple majority. Uh, the bigger loans are going to require consent of all the members. So what's important to note here is that they're putting this into motion. Um, they're saying that it's probably going to be September of 2016 when the renminbi, the Ch Chinese currency, enters officially into the IMF currency basket because you've got four currencies in there. They would be a fifth. You see, that makes things interesting. And a lot of people here within the past few months were predicting it was going to happen this year, this September. It just doesn't look like that's in the cards. Uh, it looks like definitely by this time next year, that's when what they're saying themselves. That's their projected goals. So this time next year, September of 2016, will be very interesting, no doubt, just in a sense of looking at the world markets, looking at money, looking at the U.S. dollar as the world reserve, its strength, and we all know what's inevitable to come here with this whole thing. But what I'm trying to get a beat on is the collapse of all the countries together here. Because it's in my belief, if you're going to usher in a new system, a worldwide system, you need to have the systems of all other countries um, down. You need not have anyone arguing any country here nor there, trying to say this or that, or not wanting to come on board because of this or that. They would need a worldwide system in place, and the only way they would get it is if they all collapsed. The way they're all tied in here together is if you take out the biggest one or two, they all fall. Obviously, if, if China folds in this, all the other countries with them are going to suffer. As well as on the other side of the coin, the U.S. dollar. If the U.S. dollar was to fall, it would affect not only the United States and everything that you would see happen here, but every other country and everyone out there that is using dollars as their main currency that are labeled millionaires, billionaires, that have all these dollars, they could become nothing overnight. And when that happens, some individuals out here that have this high status are going to be nothing. And because people didn't prepare... Um, it doesn't matter. They're going to be stuck in the same chaos. But my point about this is this. Not only do you need to have a plan, but if the U.S. dollar was to ever take a hit and go down, 
it, in my opinion, would cause a domino effect on all these other countries. Yeah, China could try to step up and be the, the net that saves everything, but I think inevitably it's going to be too much weight, the weight of the world, on them. That is going to bust by design, in my opinion, and give way to where every, everyone folds, like I said, the domino effect, all the way down. There will be chaos. There will be a calling period that every country is going to have to deal with or prepare to. And they speak not about that. But in the end, there will be a huge humanitarian aid uh, effort put forth from all these other countries to help the, the countries that are affected the most. But there will be an answer to all this, you see. They will come forth with this world currency. This one world currency, this one way. Now, this may not be in September of 2016. This may not be something you see until 2020. Things could uh, go back and forth here a number of different ways. But... Other countries are going to be affected different. And when it comes down to their metals, what they possess, things of that nature, their weapons, how well prepared they are to survive without the rest of the world, needing markets, needing produce, needing products being shipped in. And and depending on the money from exports that you're sending out, some countries have a lot of uh, material goods such as oils. Um, things of that nature or you know like Russia gas they're big on get the gas and oil thing but they may not produce a lot of food because half their country's in Siberia you see so what they lack they depend on from other countries so they can't just go cutting off other countries regardless of how small some of these other guys are because in the reality of all of it they're big players especially in what people have got to realize here when it comes to Ukraine that is significant and that is the breadbasket of that whole area. They've let Monsanto come in and set up shop. They put Hunter Biden in position in there. I mean, it's that's where that's all going. Okay, just so you know. And it's not going to be good a few years from now. Um, regardless, all the food, crops, everything coming out of that whole area in a Vladimir Putin is burning GMOs and American food right there at the border when it comes through, among other things. But he's going to continue to do the same thing if he, because he sees what's going on with Ukraine. Obviously, it's a proxy war between Russia and the West here, dividing out this whole place. And it's ongoing. And not only is Russia involved in Ukraine and pulled into that, but they are also involved now in the Syria conflict. You see, and once again, that has everything to do with oil and pipelines. You know, yes, Assad does not have a Rothschild bank established in there. And the Saudi Arabians want to see him gone. They want to see his family line gone, period, is what they state. And Turkey and Saudi Arabia have worked out a deal to run two pipelines through Syria. Assad doesn't let it happen. And because he doesn't let it happen, they've been ticked off to no other, along with Israel. So, we've seen the back and forth, everything. We've seen everything that's happened up to this point. China hasn't been involved in none of those. But what's happened with China is China has its own issues, say, per with Japan and with all these other countries that, like the Philippines, they all believe they have claim to these islands, Spratly Islands, all these islands and natural resources uh, in the South China Sea, especially not far off their own land. And China's trying to claim it all. So, and they're building up these islands with airstrips and everything else. They're making their moves there. India, another huge player when it comes to military, nuclear arsenal. They're right there with China and Russia, as you can see here. And Russia just reached out with Egypt and made a pact with them. You have to pay attention here where all this is going. Uh, and the other members, they could jump aboard on into this and that in itself when people start jumping ship and jumping somewhere else away from the IMF away from the US dollar um, that could cause some severe repercussions as well but I just wanted to lay this out here in terms of BRICS the monetary fund what it can do from here 
and how they're no longer going to be suckered into trying to take or have to deal with other people's money that a uh, money that can just fold overnight and leave them high and dry they'll have their own system in place the other people working with them could go into that system and if uh, the system everyone's used to collapses or falls or anything of that nature or starts to get weak they can always go over to this new system and and join you see so and then it's going to be all as to who your allies are what side of the fence you've been on this whole time it's a lot of guys have been sitting on the fence a lot of countries scared one way or another not to piss off the united states or russia and china but, but we'll see where this all goes from here i just wanted to update like i said that this is full-blown I'll leave links. It's been Dabu 7.